I'm a little bit fed up because over the years I've put so much work into making countless videos on how to improve your Wi-Fi, your broadband, your just online performance basically. And yet we still get comments on the daily saying, Alex, how can I make my Wi-Fi better, my internet better, my online experience better? So these are going to be my five tips in no particular order of things, settings you can change inside of your router to get a better experience. So the main place you're going to want to start is preferably the label that's on the back or underside of your router. This is going to hopefully contain some information like the IP address and the administration username and password. Please bear in mind that this password will often be different to the WPA or WPA2 Wi-Fi password that your Wi-Fi uses. If the label on the bottom of the router isn't giving you the information that you so desire, there's a few other ways to find this stuff out. On Windows Windows, open up command prompt and type in ipconfig. Smash enter and this will give you your default IPv4 gateway. And this is the number that you want to type in to your web browser to gain access to the router. On Mac and iOS and most Android phones, the easiest thing to do is connect via Wi-Fi, go into your Wi-Fi settings and into the settings of the network that you're connected to, and this should display you with the IP address of your router. Like I've said, copy this and paste it in a web browser. Once you've smashed enter, you should be hit with a prompt to enter a username and a password. Hopefully this is on the bottom of your router. If it's not and you can't find it, then a quick Google search of the make and model of your specific router should give you the username and password for it. Quite often this is just admin for the username and password for the password or admin admin. The first thing I always like to do with a new setup is install my own DNS. It's basically how your router or ISP converts the web address that you've typed in into the IP address which is actually there for the website. So if you didn't know this, all of the www stuff, realistically behind closed doors, all these are our IP addresses. Now some DNSs are faster than others. There's even been major clickbait titles from our favorite channel, Linus Tech Tips, about how changing your DNS servers can improve your broadband speed. It doesn't really work like this. All it's going to do, if anything, is slightly reduce the response time from when you click enter to the page actually appearing. Changing your DNS has nothing to do with affecting your broadband speeds. Now, usually with a router, it will be set to automatic and therefore it will get its DNS addresses from the ISP. Now, go ahead and stick these on manual and you can either use Google's DNSs, which Google is Google, so you know, they're obviously a, a great one to use. I personally have been using Cloudflare for the last two years and they've been great. Internet has seemed super, super responsive with them. Cloudflare are also really cool because they make DNSs that serve as an ad block as well that can do things like block adult content websites. So if you're running, let's say, a wireless network that has got lots of kids connected to it, it might be wise to use one of Cloudflare's DNSs that has the adult content filtering. I'll leave all of the links to these down in the description for you guys. Now this is going to be a really controversial one, but hear me out here. The next thing I will go ahead and change is your UPnP settings. Any program or device on your network can talk to your router and say, hey, open this port. And whether it's for good or bad, you are none the wiser. So to mitigate any bad port openings through UPnP, it's best to have UPnP disabled. And if you want to open any ports manually on your router, you can go ahead and find the port forwarding page and add these ports manually. From a security standpoint, disabling UPnP is definitely the way forward here. Now last but not least, as we are talking about security, it's really important to change that default router password. Now as previously mentioned, this isn't the Wi-Fi password, this is the administration password to log on to your router. In most routers you can find this in the administration page, go ahead and enter the old password and put a new password in and off you go. Basically, anybody that's on your network, as long as they know the IP address, can access your router. So changing the password is really, really important. So that's a wrap on the basic router settings. Next, the Wi-Fi settings, the part you're all here for. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Clean My Mac X, because there's no point in having a fast network 
if your laptop's running really slow. One of my main use cases for CleanMyMac X is what's called the space lens. This takes a moment to scan your entire drive in your computer and then in a really nice fashion, a really nice UI, displays you with all of the folders and files that are taking up the most space. So when I did a scan earlier using the space lens on my machine, I found that Apple's iMessage was taking up 50 gig all through attachments, things that I'd sent to people through iMessage on my phone, which were for some reason just living on my laptop's hard drive. One thing that I've always found strange on Macs is removing software from a Mac. It's kind of odd. You can't really go in jiggle mode and remove programs. You have to go into the applications folder. And even when you delete them, it doesn't get rid of everything that was installed with that program. But through Clean My Mac X, it has a complete uninstaller. So it shows you all of the programs that are installed in the order of how much space they're taking up. And then you can simply go ahead and tick them and remove them as you please. And it goes ahead and does a proper removal of the program to make sure that there's no little tidbits left behind. It also has an anti-malware scanner built into it, like antivirus. Macs don't really get viruses, but it's nice to know that this is included. I've personally used Clean My Mac X for the last three years of my life. So is Jed, he's behind the camera. So if you would like to get it and sponsorship aside, it is really, really good, then please use our link in the description. So with these Wi-Fi settings, I'm going to assume that everybody has a fairly standard router known as a dual band router. And realistically, that means dual band. It works on two bands, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And you're going to want to go ahead and separate the names or SSIDs of each of these networks. Quite a lot of the complaints that I get personally about broadband are completely resolved when I tell the client to connect to the 5 gigahertz network, not the 2.4 gigahertz network. But if both networks are broadcasting the same name, how do you know as the end client which one you're connecting to? They can be the same name with one different character at the end. You could put 5G at the end of the 5 gigahertz network or 2.4G at the end of the 2.4 gigahertz network. What I tend to do in my setup is, let's say our Wi-Fi is called Setup. The 2.4 gigahertz will be called Setup Legacy because we don't really want to use that 2.4 gigahertz network. It's only there for legacy devices, for older devices. For newer devices, laptops, your phones, iPads, tablets, smart TVs, these all want to be on the 5 gigahertz band because it offers much higher speed and reliability. Okay, so now we've separated our SSIDs or our Wi-Fi names from the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz so you know what you're connecting to. The next thing to tackle is the channels that each of these are using. Now on 2.4 gigahertz, You've got 11 channels that you can use, sometimes 13, depending on the router. However, there's only three of these you can use. Channel one, channel six, and channel 11, because the rest of the channels all overlap with each other. So just make sure you're on one, six, or 11 for 2.4 gigahertz, and you will be fine. Five gigahertz is slightly different, and this depends on the channel bonding that your router is using, and this completely differs from router to router. Basically, channel bonding is putting channels together to get a higher throughput or a higher speed. And this is done in megahertz, typically 20, 40, 80, or in some higher end cases, 160. Now, I would not recommend going any higher than 80 megahertz. If you have over 100 meg of internet coming in, 80 megahertz is gonna be beneficial for receiving that over Wi-Fi. However, you will get more reliability lowering down the megahertz because the higher the megahertz, the more subject to interference your Wi-Fi is. So if you do feel like you're getting interference or you live in, let's say, an apartment complex or something like that, dropping the megahertz from 80 down to 40 or even 20 will make the Wi-Fi not have or be subject to as much interference, hopefully giving you a less laggy experience. So I can see the comments already. Alex, I've separated my 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios so they have a separate name and a separate password. However, the 5 gigahertz doesn't reach anywhere. I've got to be right next to my router or access point to get a connection to it. And there's nothing wrong with your equipment. That is how this works. 2.4 gigahertz has the ability to travel further because of how its wavelength is laid out. 5 gigahertz 
Tiger Hertz has a much tighter wavelength, therefore it can't penetrate through many objects. You've probably got one wall two if you're pushing it before you've got no five gigahertz reception. How do you get around this? Well, you need to add an extra access point. A lot of people are doing this now with mesh systems, which you can buy and they automatically configure themselves and you can place a mesh point over there, a mesh point over there, and a mesh point here, and everything will be fine and dandy. You've got five gigahertz coverage all over. However, the problem with these mesh points is they talk to each other through Wi-Fi, as well as sending Wi-Fi to all of the client devices on your network. It's much better to run a hardwired cable to any device on your network that is giving out Wi-Fi, whether it's a mesh point, a Wi-Fi access point, or a second router that you've got set up in bridge mode. Another really important factor when setting up numerous wireless access points in your house if you want to have seamless roaming is to have the same name or SSID and password on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz on your separate radios. The 2.4 and 5 can be separate but on the separate radios they need to be identical. The only thing that differs is going to be the channel. Don't have two radios or routers or access points giving out the same name on the same channel. Just make sure you use an adjacent channel and you will be absolutely fine. So I've covered off a load of tips for you guys that you can do at home right now to improve your broadband speeds. If you do have any questions about anything that I've said in this video, let us know down in the comments and hopefully we can get back to you. If you've got any more improvements, again, put them down there for everybody to see. But for now guys, my name's been Alex. This has been TechFlow. Enjoy your faster internet and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.